Hey folks! Welcome back. We are doing continuing the playthrough of Star Control 2, the Urquan Masters. Uh, last time we revived the... Uh, well, we... We uh, kind of created the Chamur uh, by accelerating the fusion process that the uh, Chinjesu and the Murnum were doing. Uh, and... Uh, Then we uh, came here to Beta Rhinus, the Umga homeworld, found a talking pet. Uh, he failed to take over our minds. Uh, we blew up a bunch of Umga ships that he commanded, commanded to attack us. And then we um, made a deal with him where he'll help us out against the Iroquan. So. But now we're going to go see, talk to the Umga, see if we can convince them to help us out too, maybe. Now that we freed them from the Umga, from the... Uh, Hail, hail, human brother. Great hero has returned. Oh, my lip is quivering. Just looking at him on monitor. What a smile. What sparkling eyes. What nice, bony structure. He one who has saved us from mental compulsion. Of evil donkey pet. Hail! 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 Oh, great hero! We greatly appreciate you. Speak to us. How we reward you. So, um. How did the talking pet get into control of your species? Ah, well. Who kind of our neighbors gave us talking pet, hoping we could heal it more severe injuries, which we did. While we working on it, we do routine brain structure scans and discover that creature have extremely sophisticated set of neural pathways, even more complex than bone. Further analysis show that with minor genetic manipulations, talking pet intelligence greatly expanded, perhaps even to sentience. Oh, little did know what monster we created. Only a few hours after injected Nanox with modification program, creature wakes up almost immediately took control of Oscar. Then city, then whole planet. We try to resist, but creature, even in drug weakened state, too strong. From that day on, we just mindless slaves who live only serve talking pet and big plan. What? Big plan? Oh, we never quite sure about details of big plan, except it involved getting revenge, and mean lots of revenge against Urquan masters. Alright. Ah, uh, Senator your favorite guy. Tell me all your secrets. Secrets? Hmm. You want secrets? Our secrets? Oh, you made fatal mistake, human! <laughs> Good joke, huh? <laughs> Scared you? Sure, we tell our secrets. Now let me see. What are secrets? <gasps> oh, Remember, it's about my cons. You see, my cons only are the race we know of that have same kind of biotechnical skills as Oga. But the amazing thing, they do all with their own products. Don't need tools. They just think genetic modification and it happens. We found that pretty hard understand. So, when nobody's looking, <laughs> we clock one on 
again. Bring it back here to the whole world and slice it up for detailed study. Those guys not product of any natural evolutionary process. They constructs. Some kind of multi-purpose biological tool. We don't know who made them or for what purpose, but they weigh beyond anything we've ever heard of. We not figure out much before teaching samples all gross. So, guess that pretty much all of this secret. Oh, do us a favor. Please, not tell anybody about how King my car. It's kind of against Urquan laws and not want to get my car <laughs> mad at us. Yeah. Why the Arquan? What did it have against them? We don't know. But whatever it was, must have been pretty bad. Because talking pet bad. Real bad. How bad, you ask? Blowing off planets and eating juveniles mad. That's how bad. We got the impression Urquan did something awful to talking pet. Or maybe even a whole species. Whatever it was, it worse than slavery. Maybe even worse than death. Alright, uh, well, you're great. My hair must leave now, but the rest of sure I'll be back. You know, great hero, I give you this funny feeling. Would like to know what feeling is? Oh, good. I tell you. My feeling is that great hero stuff, well, boring, not funny at all. You only say, hey -o, hey -o, hey -o, so many times before it starts to lose appeal, so instituting slight deviations in course of our relationship, specifically, instead of being dull and lightless great hero, you now glamorous and exciting great enemy! Oh, we give you some of our drone ships to make even more interesting. Yes, this going to be lots more fun. Here, let me show you. So they give us three of their drone ships. Hooray. Uh, I'm not going to bother fighting them. We're just going to warp out. Uh, but they also... Uh, I don't know, I may have screwed up there. There's, they're supposed to give you biological data too. I might not have gotten it. Hello, human earthly saint. Although we appreciate your efforts on our behalf, we really hate eternal gratitude stuff. So we've decided to kill you now. <laughs> we pretty crazy blobbies, no? <laughs> Fuck. I was on top of a planet when that happened. God fucking- ah! I hate encountering things on top of a planet, because it means you keep falling back in the- Well, pop my head. If human earthly again, it just doesn't learn, does it? Two arms? Two arms? Wait a minute. Don't have any arms! Ah, oh, my arms! My arms! Who stole my arms? Arm thief! Arm thief! <laughs> Never had any arms. <laughs> the sad thing is, it's not even that they're dangerous, it's just I don't, I'm just not in the mood to fight them. But I have, I don't want to waste more fuel on this. Fine, we'll blow them up. There are only three of them. <laughs> Ow. Well, I 
was gonna... Continue on my travels here. Fuck! Go away. Uh, not in the mood to fight you guys. That was actually kind of funny. Ow! Uh, I'm losing so much crew to this just because I'm... The problem with the Umga is their ships aren't very good, but they're really, really annoying. So people, if people are wondering what, why the Umga interior thing looked all sort of blobby and weird, uh, that's because the Umga are really, really good at biotech, and their ships are sort of basically living ships. Fares well, Captain. I have some information I think you should hear. We have made a formal alliance with the Shimmer. Their ships can now be built in our shipyard. Yep. Uh, Alan, what I've acquired since my last visit. The analysis reads as this is follows. Funny. Subject, talking pet life form. Data, this creature is physiologically identical to the so-called Urquan talking pet with one notable exception. It is highly intelligent and evidences strong psychic capabilities. Initial AIQR test rated it well above human super genius, though immediately after we made this shocking assessment, its scores dropped to the normal, subnormal range. Interviews with the subject have shown it to be cooperative, though a class 4 pan species psychological profile places the creature far into the furtive, hateful domain. There were also some disturbing incidences where we talked about roses, daisies, and other pretty flowers. Summary, everything's okay, nothing to worry about with this cuddly little guy. Not one thing. <laughs> That's the end of our scientist report. <laughs> All we right. We shall await your return, Captain. Yeah. All right, uh, shipyard. Let us first. Um, yeah, go away. I do not want your ships, Omega. Your ships are terrible. Yeah, might as well.
Actually, no, we won't take another avatar. I can use another Earth Cruiser, honestly, for something that's coming up. Finish recruiting everything. Need to recrew uh, my other Spathia looter. Alrighty. Uh, okay, we're going to go up to the Thredash and uh, go grab something from there. From other planets. Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Alright, uh, before we go, uh, manifest devices, uh, we've got caster. Let's make a call to the, uh, Milner May. Sell some biological data. Like data alien life forms. The yep. Units of biological data we downloaded from your ship earn you four hundred thirteen eight credits. Yeah, I forgot to ask the uh, the Umga for uh, the for for support. So they should have given me. If I said the right thing in the dialogue options there, they should have given me 500 units of biological data, but we should be good. Three items would you like to buy today? Fuel. How much fuel do you wish to purchase? Ah, uh, fill her up. Fuel transferred to your vessel. It has been a pleasure dealing with you, Captain. We look forward to your next visit. portal. Now there is a portal up near where we're headed next. Zeta Draconis.
This planet has an energy signature on it. Let's go to it. And a lot of earthquakes. Report from the surface. Captain, we have discovered some sort of alien shrine here on the surface. The building is immensely old, at least 2,000 years. Inscribed around the perimeter of the cylindrical shrine are innumerable hieroglyphs which document the history of each of the 19 Thirdash cultures. From what we have seen, we have learned that the Thirdash have risen to star-faring technology at least three separate times, only to nuke themselves back into the Stone Age again and again. The real surprise, Captain, was what we found inside the shrine. We knew the Thirdash kept something down here, but we didn't know what it was until we went inside the shrine. In each exact middle of the structure was a tall dais of white stone. Set atop this dais was an immense aqua gemstone, somehow shaped into a flat, twisted ribbon, like a DNA helix. The aqua helix emitted incredible light pulses, illuminating the cavernous shrine like a giant strobe light. At least, it did. Until Private Hendrix decided to see what would happen if he grabbed, it, grabbed that artifact. The helix immediately ceased glowing, and has remained quiescent ever since. We'll bring the Aqua Helix back aboard the ship for a further investigation. End of report. So, um, as a note, uh, as I said, there's another way to get the device. You can also, by befriending the Thradash, they'll let you land on the planet. Uh, although they will become incredibly pissed off with you when you grab the Helix and leave. So. I'm curious about something. I'm actually going to go to the Thrash homeworld for a second. I'm going to see what happened. Delta Draconis. Kai Draconis. Okay, I'm just going to find the correct. 253. Yep, we can just enter orbit. Oh, some biological, biological school. We'll go ahead and grab those. I'm actually gonna. There are a couple of places I want to check out after this. Like, I'm gonna go to the Pekong Home World at some point and check out what's up there. Alright, that's all the biologicals. That can be. Port from the surface. Everyone and everything on this planet has been destroyed. Captain? Destroyed, Captain. Alright, well. The Thrash have been basically wiped out. Kind of a bummer. Hopefully some of them live on somewhere.
This is, strictly speaking, not actually, you know, helpful, but I'm curious. Can a crew sort over here, I should remember. This is sort of an idle curiosity thing. And we're gonna go talk to the druids next. I'm just gonna go over here and check this out first. Because the druids have the uh, last bit we need for the Ultron. I'm just curious to see what the, what's up with the Vekong homeworld. Idle curiosity. Yep, nobody here. Nothing worth landing for. Actually, let me just double check. There's no energy signatures, right? No, there are. Uh, let's go take a look. Again, idle curiosity. Uh, Captain, we have searched the Pekunk ruins and found nothing more of note. Huh. Well, okay, well, we didn't find anything noteworthy. Alas. I'd go look at the Elrath, but I'm not, not going to bother. Star map. Alright, now we want to go to Thradash space. There is a portal near there that I happen to know about, because I have extensive notes. Uh... Not through Ash, um, Druge Space. Uh, there we go. That's what I want. 488. 538. This is the one up here. And we'll get to go talk to what some of the positively just. Oh, God, the Druge. Druidge homeworld is Zeta Perse, that's right. Uh... Very nearby. Black Sun's very close to the sun. Interesting. We're gonna fly around you guys because you're slow. Attention, alien starship. You have arrived at the central trade world of the Crimson Corporation. Home of the Druge. Be welcome and take advantage of our excellent deal. We know that you have Micon Deep Child egg case fragments aboard your vessel. Would you consider trading them to us for a shiny new Mauler starship? We know you possess the Vortex Spawner. In exchange for the simple device, we will give you three Mauler starships and Fill your fuel tanks at no extra charge. Uh, what can you tell us about this trade world? 
This is the heart of our operation. The vital core of the Crips Corporation. A million deals are made here each day. Perhaps more. You would be wise to take advantage of all our services, Captain. You will not find better deals anywhere. Uh, all right. Sure. Since this is your first time trading with us, Captain, allow me to explain our standard operating procedures. We will sell you fuel, ancient artifacts, even our own Mauler starships. All that we ask in return is that you assign some of your crew to serving here at our trade world on a permanent basis. Uh, I will never sell you... No, 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 no. This is a great loss for us both. But... We will not make an exception in your case. However, please try to be receptive to what I am about to say. We have taken the liberty of entering your ship's computer system to investigate the agreement signed by the Earthly Volunteers, who serve aboard your vessel. As we expected, we found that they have promise to obey you, Captain. Under every circumstance, no exceptions. You are fully within your rights to deal with us in our required manner. Should you change your mind, we will always be ready to work with you, Captain. I'm a seller. are prepared to make a deal. I saw that case fragments here. Captain, a special deal. A bargain unequal. Instead of the usual payment we would give for this item, what would you say to a different exchange? We would like to trade your commodity for a highly valuable precursor artifact. The Rosy Sphere. Its origins are filled with wonder, and its powers are uncontestable. Oh, what is your response? Um... Tell me more about this artifact, this rosy sphere. Its genesis is lost in antiquity. Along with the race who created it, the marvelous precursors. Note how the device glows. How it throbs, pulsing slowly, bright, then dark like the heart of a slumbering god. Captain, this artifact has been in our possession for eons. Vast brutal wars have been fought over its possession. The offer we make to you here today is quite unique. Do not make a hasty choice. Um... I'll take this ex exceptional, unusual offer entirely because uh, I need the rosy sphere. <laughs> you are indeed a wise young human. The rosy sphere is yours. Uh, don't I don't want. I'm not selling my portal spawner. Go away. Very well. Bye. Return soon. Appreciate. Bye, Druge. We have no. F I have no desire to sell anything else to you. Doop 
do 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 We're leaving your territory. We're going back to Earth now. So yes, if I wanted to, I could sell crew off to buy Druge Maulers or fuel or what have you. Um, I don't want to do that because, um, you. A, the Druge Maulers are not good ships. And B, I'm not selling them crew. Um, and I'll explain why, because we will get into a fight with some Druge Maulers at some point. And I'll explain why I refuse to sell them my, sell them my crew. But not right now. I just want to go back to Earth, recrew a little bit, uh, and have them analyze my little alien artifacts there. Ah, Captain, I'm glad you're back. Uh, analyze what we required. The analysis reads as follows. Subject, rosy sphere device. Data, the specimen is five centimeters in diameter, perfectly smooth and composed of a blood-red translucent substance. Tests show that it has atypical ferromagnetic properties, but is utterly non-conductive. Summary, probably a precursor tool. Function, unknown. The next entry in the analysis is, subject, aqua helix device. Data, this device is composed of a light blue super hard substance which rates Mohs 13. The object is composed of a flat ribbon of homogeneous material approximately one meter in length, and it is twisted in a perfect helix. Focused ion and nucleomagnetic scans reveal little about its interior. Summary, unknown design, unknown origin, unknown function. That's the end of our scientist's report. Uh, some of the chat asks, aren't the Druids the ones who sold the Ultron originally to the uh, Utwig? Yes, they are. They are, they're just, uh, yeah. Try to avoid getting gruesomely killed, Captain. They just have no idea that the uh, the bit thing, so the thing they sold me will help repair the Ultron. All right, devices. Rosy sphere. Aqua helix. Clear spindle. We now have a perfect Ultron. All right, let's uh, navigate. Let's have these. Starbase, let's have the commander take a look at the have the scientists take a look at the complete Ultron. Ah, Captain, I'm glad you're back. The analysis reads as follows. Subject, Ultron. Data. We have determined that the so-called Ultron is, in fact, the appendages of Dawn, described in the precursor fragment found on Rigel in 2123. In the partially translated precursor text, the device is described as a mental amplifier which focuses mental energies of the holder for the purpose of discrete change. Unfortunately, human brain emanations do not seem compatible with the Ultron, nor do those of the allied species we have tested. Summary? Perhaps the Utwig who claim to understand this device can shed some light on its true function and power. That's the end of our scientist's report. Alright, uh, goodbye, Commander. Bring back lots of minerals, Captain. We have plenty of resource units for the time being. Alright, uh, that is going to do it for this part of the recording. Uh, the next part, we're going to go talk to the Utwig, uh, give them the Ultron, get the Precursor Bomb device. Um... Actually, the next part might be wrapping things up, in all honesty, now that I'm thinking about it. Because once we get the b Precursor Bomb from the Utwig, we should be able to make the push into the final stages of the game. So, we will see. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you guys in the next part.